Welcome back to Switch Corner. Today we're taking a look at Double Kick Heroes for the Nintendo Switch. This one, it's a bit of like a hybrid. It's combining rhythm-based gameplay with a dash of almost like wave-based defense. My big question though with this one, can it really mesh these genres together? And more simply, how does it even play? Well, like hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and let's get started. So first of all, right off the bat, Double Kick Heroes is that rare rhythm experience that's actually trying its hand at a story. Now it's not going to break, you know, any new ground for like storytelling, nor is it really trying to, but it does deliver a good dose of like humour while introducing you to a likeable cast of characters. Here basically you are a metal band by the name of Double Kick Heroes, and the idea is this, zombies they've taken over the world and you must now get out there on this road trip and just work out what is happening or getting to you know safety. It's entertaining stuff and they even throw in a ton of references that rock fans will no doubt get to so in the early game, think like Marilyn Manson and Wayne's World. My favourite part of the story though it's how it takes place, basically it gives you the freedom with this like overworld map, so think like Mario, so you'll be choosing which mission you go on next and who you talk to. Overall it's just like simple but great stuff. So gameplay and first off let's talk modes, obviously at this point you know there's a story mode but if that's not your thing there's a decent amount of other options just to kind of sink your teeth into, even if I will say they don't really change too much from one to the next. Want to just, you know, though, play the tracks, skip all that dialogue, arcade mode, that is for you. Want exclusively like licensed tracks, so think like Gajira, that's probably the big one in the game, or a track from the game Sterendon go for Hellgate mode. Finally, want something a little bit more competitive? Fury Road is for you. Here you'll actually find two options. Fury Road itself is basically a challenge mode where all players are competing on the same tracks, the same sections. It's basically a daily challenge. You'll also be getting a high score here though. But then also you get Endless Rage and the name says it all. It's basically an endless mode. Start at the very beginning and try and make it all the way through. All the modes here, all the options as well, they also allow you the ability to like upgrade your weapons and skills between songs, which definitely adds for a tiny bit a strategy. I like the modes we do get overall but I can't help but notice the omission of well first off any sort of online competitive play which I feel could really work with the game here but the big one no sort of like leaderboards online or offline just a personal best you know daily challenges they kind of lose their weight when there's really no way of knowing how your competition is doing. Seems like an odd miss to me but also potentially hopefully at least an easy thing for them to fix in the future. So the core experience and here's the idea, you're going to watch the bar across the bottom of the screen, you're going to hit the note in time with the track. Nothing too groundbreaking for the genre in that sense, but here is where it gets interesting. Each of your notes is actually attached to a weapon on your car. If you start at the lowest of difficulties, the very beginning of the game basically results in press B to fire your lower gun and A for that upper. Turn up that difficulty or simply progress though and it will start throwing more and more at you. It gets challenging quickly that is for sure, if not down to the songs themselves then thanks to what's happening up top. That's because you need to watch the zombies approaching the back of the car, the pattern, you know, work out what gun you need to use next to keep your life bar full. As someone who's played a lot of rhythm games over the years, I've basically been trained to focus on the notes only, ignoring nearly everything else. And you just can't do that here, so it takes a little getting used to. You'll learn here though, between gaps in the music, take a look at the zombies, strategize your next notes, and then quickly get back into the music action. Eventually, for me, I even started to recognize what was happening, you know, kind of in the corner of my eye. And I gotta say, as a peripheral like vision training game, this is about as good as they get. Once I got used to it, it just felt really good, it became natural. And having that freedom to choose my own input actually led to a little bit more tension, you know. The whole experience actually relied on my own judgement rather than just simply doing what I was told. Now thankfully I will say a rhythm game it absolutely lives or dies by its controls and here they are not only solid but they give you a ton of options. Now as with most in the genre it's going to introduce new commands at a pace that you can learn them but it will pretty much you know kick your ass constantly as you progress. Now I will say as well it introduces challenge very nearly immediately so don't expect like a nice easy stretch at the beginning here by like track four I was feeling the pressure. Now at this point also I gotta say notes are coming thick and fast and it was tough getting used to a controller. I started with the pro controller myself. I expected the bigger buttons to give me an advantage. 
but before I knew it, I was working my way through like the Karma Sutra of controller grips. You'll start with just your thumb, but quickly you're gonna recognize your thumb absolutely sucks at rhythm, so you'll be experimenting from there. I went from thumb to like a two-handed sideways grip to putting it on a table like a literal drum, and then the game screwed me by introducing the triggers too. What I finally realized was Joy-Cons were the best bet for me, the last I absolutely expected, but the clicky nature of the buttons along with the super short travel distance of them makes the response time a little bit more forgiving as you try and hit all of these notes as they fall into that yellow bar you see at the bottom of the screen. This is absolutely essential to progression as well because combos or these successive notes lead to like temporarily better firepower. At least that is of course until you miss so you've got to get a control pattern that works for you down. So once you've beaten the five different difficulty options on offer which is going to take you some considerable time you can make it even more complicated thanks to extensive options. Or even saying that you can make it easier too if you're struggling. Want to control the car location on your screen? Actually drive that thing? Well, you can do that if you want to, though I will say you got to be brave if, you know, tapping to the rhythm and locking at two screens wasn't enough for you, then go here. You can speed up or slow down the music. You can remove burnout. This occurs when you miss too many notes in a row and it actually stores you for a few seconds. You can even add a metronome if you want, just if you're struggling, you know, to find that beat double kick heroes for controller options and just options in general is seriously impressive. That said though, I gotta say one weird omission here in the game and options, the lack of any rumble features. Surely this could have been well used for those, you know, correct or even missed notes. I will say here I found none at all. I gotta say if there was one thing I found challenging as well, it was actually recognizing when I missed a note because there's very little in the way of like audio cue to tell you that and that like vibration could have probably solved that problem. So finally for gameplay then, there's still one more control option and that is motion controls. I will say I was like skeptical going in, but I walked away impressed. There's two variations, but my go-to was an option where your Joy-Cons, they basically become like drumsticks. Essentially, you're gonna swing in time to the music. It adds to the challenge for sure, because not only are you now watching the zombies on the top half of the screen, watching the notes on the bottom, but now you're swinging your arms about like an idiot too. That said, it was by far the most fun I had with the game. If you want to perfect every single run though, it's probably not the option for you. There was like the occasional, you know, unregistered note or picking up on movement that must have been so slight I didn't even feel it, but I did see the miss on screen. Accuracy wise, if I had to give it a percentage, I'd say like 95% of the time it was absolutely fine. So if you can sacrifice a little score for entertainment, I would definitely say head this direction. But overall, there's no doubt I've had a great time with Double Kick Heroes, and there's a nice selection of options here. That said, though, you do really have to like, you know, rhythm games, because once that initial, like, five-hour story is over, you're pretty much then just chasing personal high scores or tackling higher difficulties. I'm not embarrassed to say I'm on one of the lower difficulties in the video here, but those high-up ones are just insane. I'm not even sure how the controller handles it, so they'll keep you busy, put it that way. This, though, is where online would have benefited the game, and just added a little more in the way of like longevity. That said, I enjoyed every moment of this one's runtime and its unique gameplay combination just makes for something that felt very fresh and I will be jumping in to tackle some of this gameplay again. So graphically speaking, I'm gonna keep it quick. It's pixel work and it works well to the style of the game. It feels right alongside its influences. You know, things like your Wayne's Worlds, even like your maybe Beavis and Butthead style and, and so on. The visuals though, they are nice and bold in all their pixelated glory and that is essential because you'll need to be aware of so many different like moving pieces at once. The car, its location, the zombies, the notes, the weapon placement. Then the character designs, solid stuff, each with their own unique personality and it's constantly introducing like new faces and locations for you to talk to and explore. Animations, I will say they're pretty repetitive but not really important and it should kind of be expected with every level being near identical with a background like change out. The enemy design though, I gotta say, is fantastic. It's good stuff visually though, like no complaints from me, I was overall impressed. So audio then, and for the most metal heads, this one is for you. I will say it gets a little bit more gentle at points, say like rock with a hint of synthwave, but you're not gonna go in here and find, you know, pop tracks or jazz or anything like that. I grew up nearly like exclusively on the genre, so for me, it absolutely works, but it may not be for everyone. That said though, like it makes absolute sense given the story, the band we're looking over. Also, I gotta say here, respect for not bowing down to the cash bags by sticking pop songs in here just to sell a few additional copies. You know, respect where respect is due. 
The music overall though is great. There's no real major artists in here. We get a nice selection of like game exclusive tracks and then some smaller artists that have been licensed. It changes things up though just frequent enough that it's always slightly moving through the metal world, never getting repetitive. Really that is about it for audio. We get the odd gun sound here and there, some minimal dialogue at the opening and then some enemy sounds, but yeah. The music is the focus here, it's the heart of the game and it absolutely delivers in that sense. So overall, like Double Kick Heroes is a solid entry into the genre that doesn't settle for just simply being just another music game. It takes that core formula and idea and then it meshes it together with like tower defense strategy, just a great effect. The challenge here is actually working out the best option for controls, whether that's going to be motion for you or some weird ass grip on the pro controller or joy cons. That said, look, the difficulty on the upper levels absolutely destroyed me and I do believe they will be for like the most hardened of rhythm game fans out there. Picking up this game as well, I will say on the TV is going to be your best playing option. Don't get me wrong, handheld works too, but your thumbs, they're going to struggle to keep up especially on them higher difficulty levels. And that goes for light users as well. Light users though, honestly, just know you can't use motion obviously, and you may benefit from like a separate controller of some sort. That said, look, rock, metal fans, there's few rhythm games that exclusively like cater to the genre. So I think you will find a lot to like here. Everyone else come here for a take on the genre that's basically trying something new and different as long as you can handle and cope with the soundtrack. A good test for you, it's probably going to be for you to go and listen to a song called Remembrance by the band Gajira. I'm going to link it in the description below. The majority of the game's not quite that heavy in its style, but it's going to give you a solid idea if your ears are going to be made for this game. With all that said, look, I enjoyed the gameplay. I appreciate the options for controls too. And then the story, it was just simply put entertaining. The only area that really lacks for me with this one, what could have pushed this game to another level though, was basically online play, leaderboards, and maybe some basic rumble functionality. If you can live without those things, are you going to have a great time here? Today, I'm giving Double Kick Heroes a great eight out of 10. I've got to say, I think it's a reasonable price this one for what we get, as long as you think it's going to keep you coming back. With this game as well, you're going to need to master to those controls and the rhythm but once you get it it feels great as you think about all these different things at once just come here knowing you're in for a challenge even on the lowest of difficulties nearly immediately thanks for watching will you be picking this one up are you even like interested with its big focus on you know metal music or do you even like rhythm games at all all of course important questions to ask yourself right now now like as always then a quick shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support switch corner i truly do appreciate it and it helps more than you know if you want to check that out for yourself i have linked it in the video description down below then if you are new to the channel consider hitting that subscribe button if you love the switch as much as we all do here join our growing family and i'll see you all on the next video thanks everyone